What's up everyone, my name is Mark Plant and this is Black Hut Design. And like I said, my name is Mark Plant and this is Black Hut Design. Thanks for coming in. If you saw my last video, you'll understand why I'm saying Black Hut Design rather than MPV Vlogs. So if you haven't seen it, uh, this corner, I believe it's up here. If not, it's over here. Uh, there's the video, check it out. In any case, Thanks for coming in. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down on the bottom there. Uh, let you go back and look at all the videos that I've done in the past. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. You're the reason why I'm doing this video today and why I'm able to do this video today. If you haven't already, hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button and you'll get a notification anytime I put up a new video. Uh, if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead, give me the other one, that's fine. Leave me a comment, let me know why you liked the video, why you didn't like the video, or anything else that you'd like to see. That being said, uh, like I said in my last video, I started doing some 3D printing. Complete novice at it, no idea what I'm doing at first. I've been practicing, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do right now to do a 3D print. Might be the right way, might be the wrong way. If you're an experienced 3D printer, give me some tips, give me some comments on what to do. So what do you say we head over to the 3D printer and let's print something out. So it's it's really not that difficult, 3D printing. Uh, I mean, it can get difficult once you get into the designing pot, but the printing itself really isn't that bad. Just as long as you pay attention and watch your controls. What I'm going to do here is I have a project that I've already created. Uh, I'm going to print it, but you have to do some things before you can print. Uh, first thing, if you notice over here, my bed is extremely horrible, dirty. That's going to need to be cleaned. Um, I also need to level the bed, so I'll show you how you level the bed. This printer here is an Ender 3 version 2. I got it, like I said in the last video, I got it off of Amazon. Really good price. Uh, so far, it's done pretty well. Uh, I printed out a few things, like right here. I printed out a solid block letter. Uh, creating a sign. I'll show you that once I'm done with it. Uh, so, what do you say? Wait, let's clean the, clean the bed and then level the bed. And then I'll show you how I do the printing. How I bring it from the computer over to the printer. Alright, as you can see, this bed's pretty filthy right now. I printed out some... Basically, ear savers, the face masks that we have to wear for both my wife, my daughter, and I. Uh, those came out really good. I wish I'd shown that on video. Um, I'll show you those, how they came out, you know, towards the end of this video. First thing you need to do when cleaning the bed is you got to scrape up all the extra garbage. It does leave some. The only thing is you have to be careful that you do not scratch the glass bed, which I have done. So I do have some scratches in some areas. Okay, so get as much of that off as you can, gently. And then the next step is you get yourself some isoprol rubbing alcohol in a microfiber rag. Pour a little bit of the alcohol on the rag. Doesn't have to be that much. And let's wipe it down. Eh, rag's getting in the way. Okay, what we do is wipe it all off. We'll switch over to a clean rag here. What you're seeing here, this is all glue. So that's going to need to be cleaned off. Really sticky. Holy mackerel, I think I've got too much glue on there. And it might have been one of my problems on the last one. I had too much glue. It takes some scrubbing to get it off. Yeah. So I've been told that um, Windex will take this off too, but I think I got it there. I think this pass, I got it. Okay, so that's what that's telling me is I'm kicking on the glue too much. Yeah, just dry it off, make sure we got it all. I think I got that pretty clean now. That should be pretty good. All right, so we got that all set. So now what I have to do is I have to, this is the most frustrating part of it, is I have to level the bed. We have to use an extreme technological device to level this bed, piece of paper. 
<laughs> that's it. So as you can see down here, that there is the nib. And what we have to do is we have to bring this piece of paper underneath the nib. Okay, so as you can see right there, it's loose. So what we do is we tighten it up. See right now I can't move the paper so it's too tight. So I loosen it a little bit. So what it has to be is it has to be snug, but not loose. Let's try that again. Bring it down. Like right now, there's just a little bit of tension on that piece of paper. So this corner is level now. Now I've got to move the head and the bed. Don't want to do that because you can, you got to be careful doing it, I should say, because you can force electricity into the stopper motors and burn them out. So to prevent that, let's go over to the control pad. So this is the control pad. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to prepare. And then what you want to do is you want to go over here to disable stepper. Okay, and what that does is it shuts off those motors so that there's no damage. So let's go back and let's continue leveling the bed. So as you can see, these are the wheels here that we're going to use to basically balance the bed. So you don't want to go... From one corner to the next you actually want to go diagonally forward and then back all right so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bed forward now that the steppers are off then we're going to pull the print head over we're going to go all the way we're going to pull this all the way okay so all four corners are equal but by adjusting this one I may have thrown the one in front out of alignment, so we'll just double check. There we go, we're good. Alright, so the bed is now level. We're all set over here. So now what we need to do is we need a project to print. So let's shut this camera down and I'm going to take you over to the computer. Alright everyone, over at the computer right now. Uh, biggest part of doing any sort of 3D printing is the design for the project. I'm not good at designing yet. So what I've done is there are places that you can go where you can download free projects, something that someone's already done. So the project that I'm working on right now, it's really a simple one. Uh, it is a light switch with Stitch from um, the Disney character Stitch coming off of it. So what I did was I downloaded two projects. One was the model of Stitch and the other was the model of the light switch. So I guess this would be Stitch's switch. Sorry, I crack myself up. But anyway, I'll show you how that, how I do it, or how to do it, or a way to do it. Uh, what I'm trying to teach myself is how to do the CAD so that I can create my own projects uh, to be able to print out. So once I'm able to do that, I'll show you how to do that. But what do you say, let's go over to the computer now, and I'll show you the software that I use and how I bring it into the 3d printer all right so we are on the computer right now basically the software is that you can use it's actually a three-step process to do a 3d print you need to create the project you need to slice the project and then you need to print the project so there are there can be other steps before creating the project well, I guess it would be considered creating the project. You can use software such as Adobe Illustrator. Photoshop works okay, but in basic, you want to use some sort of CAD software, computer-aided drafting. There are many free options out there. Uh, Tinkercad is a website that you can go to create an account, and you are able to create products or projects, I should say, there. So let's go, we will check out Tinkercad. Like I said, and Tinkercad is completely free. So this is basically Tinkercad here. Uh, these are some of the projects that I was playing with. And let's go over here. We'll take a look at this here. We'll go and we'll tinker with it. So like I said, this is, it's a CAD program. It's a free CAD program. We're able to rotate in all dimensions. Okay. and it's a great place to start out to learn uh, a lot of limitations with Tinkercad uh, 
for details and, and such and to bring in your own if you're doing letters like fonts and stuff like that so it could be really difficult uh, i haven't dove in depth in tinkercad so i mean there's probably a lot that you know that i haven't um i haven't scratched the surface basically so the project i created here was not on tinkercad so let's get out of tinkercad another program this is obviously by the name name of the program is called freecad it's free uh, this is a very buggy program. I've played with it on a couple of things and it crashes, crashes quite often. Uh, so let me show you what I have here. Yeah, there it is. Let me scroll out here. Okay, this here is the logo for my channel. And... Like I said, you're able to go in here and basically what I could do is I could take this and I could make modifications to it, change the size and, and all that, change the depth. I could add this onto another product, project. Um, but like I said, it's really, really difficult to work with. Uh, so, you know, it's something to look at. It's good to learn because it, it is a, an actual CAD program. But like I said, it is buggy and it crashes quite often and that can be very frustrating if you don't save your work often. I didn't use this for this project. What I did was I downloaded Autodesk Fusion 360. They have a free demo software for this. Uh, you're allowed, I believe it's five, it's either five or ten projects that you're able to do with it. If you decide that you want to purchase this software, quite expensive it's like sixty dollars a month for personal use if you're a business it's like twelve hundred dollars to use this software so it's quite pricey there is a way to get the software if you are a startup company for free uh, so I am trying to start up a company so I'm going to try using that so let me go here and as you can see over here here are the bits that I've used this is a, another project that I I was working on but we've got the light switch over here Oop, this stitch right there so those are the two um, the two files that I downloaded eh, it's not gonna let me bring it in let's do this um, like I said I created the project on this and then I saved it and what you do is you save I save it with the extension STL what that allows me to do is to bring it over to our next piece of software this is what I found with uh, Fusion 360. It's really hard. Well, actually, it closed quick for me now. Thing is, I was saying something. What I do is I bring it over to this piece of so software, which is called Ultimaker Cura. This is free. Okay, and what this software allows you to do is allows you to... Basically, you could bring the STL file in. So let's do that. We'll bring in the Stitch one. So we'll open that up. Okay, and what this software allows you to do is I can come in, I can resize it, I can change the orientation. And over here, what this is, is these are commands that will go to the 3D printer. Okay, so it, you, you tell it the quality, how thick you want, the layer height, uh, what you want to do with the shell, um, the infill, which is, inside i mean these pieces of plastic are or filament are not solid so it there's structures inside that hold the project together or the print together so that it doesn't collapse in on it itself because you are putting hot filament on which will sag and gravity takes control you can change how fast it goes and all of that goes through here so what we're going to do is this is the project that we're going to print today so I need to make a couple of changes here because I am, I'm not using PLA filament, which this is set for. I'm actually using P, PTEG filament. So we're going to change this to 230 degrees with an 80 degree build plate temperature. I'm going to keep the speed at 50 millimeters a second, even though I could go up to 500. The faster you go on your print speed, the less quality that you're going to get. So I think I'm going to keep everything else here the same. 
I have retraction. Everything else here is fine. So let's bring this up. And now what we need to do is we need to slice the program. And when you slice the program, what it's basically doing is it's creating a file called a dot G code. And what that is, is the instructions that the printer actually reads so that it knows where to put down the filament and where to move to and to print out your project, basically. So let's go over here. We will slice this. It takes a couple of seconds, depending on the complexity of your project is how long it takes. Now, just to print this here, it's going to take me four hours and 58 minutes. So it, it, 3D printing can take a long time. I could probably speed it up a little bit, but I want a little bit of quality on this project that I'm doing. So what you need to do is I have a micro SD card in the computer. I'm going to save it to the micro SD card. So that's our file name down here. Bring this disk and let's head back over to the printer. All right, so we're back over here at the printer, and there's a couple of things we need to do. Uh, we need to put the disc inside the printer. We need to warm the printer up, and then we need to print. Actually, we need to uh, uh, prepare the bed for printing. So let's prepare the bed first, and we'll go from there after that. All right, quick update. I had to go and redo that file. Uh, one of the things when you're doing 3D printing if there's any overhang, you actually have to put supports underneath it. Otherwise, like I said, gravity will pull it down. I didn't put the supports when I sliced the product at the project a few minutes ago, so I had to redo the file. It's already done. All right, let's go over to the printer and let's set it up for a print. All right, so we're over here at the printer right now, and what I have to do is prep the printer for printing. One of the most important things when doing a 3D print that I found, and I found it, is you have to have adhesion to the bed. Now this is a glass plate, uh, and like I showed you, I took all the garbage off with the alcohol. If I was to print on this right now, the filament's most likely not going to stick. Uh, I'm using a filament that's called PETG, and yeah, that'll slide all over the place. So what I have to do is I have to prep the bed so that I can print. As, as strange as it, it sounds, a 99 cent glue stick is what you use to prep the bed. So <laughs> I, other people will use Aquanet hairspray. Uh, you can also put blue painter's tape on this. I haven't done that. I'm nervous about doing the painter's tape because this bed is heated up. It's up to 70 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty warm. So I'm afraid to put tape on it. But the glue has worked very well. All right, so let's prep the bed. All you do, it's quite easy. Get a good edge. And just cover the bed. Okay, this is a pretty big piece that I'm printing. It's going to take about five hours to print. So if you're interested in 3D printing and you want something quick, uh, you, you're out of luck. <laughs> I mean, there are other printers out there that are a lot better than this one that will will print faster, but they're also going to cost two to three times as much. So as you can see, what I do is I go across the bed and then front and back on the bed to give good coverage, make sure it's completely covered. And that's it. That's how you prep the bed. So that bed's all set. Should be good to go. So what we're going to do is let's go over here to the control panel. So what we're going to do is we will... Let's turn on the printer. Okay, printer is on. So what we're going to do is let's go over here to prepare. Let's home the bed again. Okay, the bed is home. What we're going to do is preheat PLA. So what this is doing right now, it's preheating the nozzle and it's preheating the bed. And once that's done, I've already put the disc into the printer, the SD card I should say. Let's go over here because sometimes it doesn't 
recognize the file. Let's make sure it recognizes the file. Okay, I ended up calling the file stitch plate. So once this is warmed up, we'll hit OK on the stitch plate, and then it should start running. Okay, we're just about there. Uh, give the bed a couple of seconds. It's going to take a couple of more seconds because once I open up the stitch plate file, it's going to get the configuration for that. So let's hit the button here. We'll open up stitch plate. Getting ready to print. Okay, what it's going to do is going to lay a layer of filament along the side there, and then it's going to come in and stop printing. Like I said, it usually heats up pretty quick. It takes usually about five minutes, uh, which if you think about it, really isn't that bad, because that's a high temperature it's going to. All right, so we're at temperature now. Let's click Stitch Plate. It's loading all the G-code from the SD card into the printer itself, into its computer. Take a couple of seconds to do, and then we'll lay down a print. If you're looking to viewer details or different parts of this print job, I am live streaming this right now. Uh, it is on YouTube as a live stream. Here we go. Oh, it didn't stick on the edge. See if I saved it. All right. Oh, let's go to it. Fast forwarding here. All right, we had a failure. <laughs> failure of epic proportions. Oh lord. That, my friends, is a mess. All right. What it is is I'm printing with the product. The filament's called PETG. I've tried several prints with this. It does not want to stick to my bed. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I've used the filament um, PLA. It works beautiful. So I think I'm going to go with the PLA. I don't ha think I have enough white, though. So what we're going to do to switch out, I'll show you here. Okay, so the filament comes down here. And goes into the extruder here. I said I'm not happy with the stuff. Let's see if I can take it out. You don't want to lose control of it, like I'm doing right now. I don't think there's anything wrong with the filament itself. I don't know, just don't know why it's doing this. So, like I said, it's. PETG. I am just not having any luck with it. We'll put that aside. Okay, you can see the whole printer here. So, first thing I'm going to do, let's get this crap off the bed. Okay, so the bed's cleared off. What I have here is this is PLA that was sent with the printer. I think I should have enough here to do this product project. I'm going to do it at the higher temperature. Uh, PLA usually extrudes at a lower temperature, but we'll try it with this. Okay. So that's in all the way now. Alright. Alright, let's try this again. I'm not sure with that warmer temperature. Might be too warm for PLA. We'll see. All right, so we're up to temperature now. Stitch plate. Let's start it. All right, hopefully I have enough PLA on this, this spool here to uh, print this thing. We will see. All right, here we go. Alright, the print.
print is all done now. Now what we have to do is let it cool down for about 15 minutes and then we're going to take it right off of the plate. Print's all done. Uh, took about five and a half hours to print this. Not for the impatient. If you're an impatient person, 3D printing it will not be for you because it does take quite a long time to print something. Uh, so there's probably ways for me to do it where I probably could have printed it a lot quicker. Uh, I'm learning. Uh, hopefully I'll figure those things out because to print five and a half hours for this, that, that's a long time. In any case, we're going to let the bed cool now for a little while. And then once it's done, we'll take it off the bed and let's see how it came out. I think it came out good. It looks pretty good. I learned to use the PLA filament on projects like this. I uh, did a little research while I was printing. The PTG is actually for basically something that I want to build that needs strength. Uh, it's difficult to paint, so it actually wouldn't have been the right stuff for this. So I'm glad it did mess up because it wouldn't have worked for what I wanted to. That being said, let's let it cool down for a little bit and I'll get back with the guys in a little bit. All right, everyone, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes. The bed's been cooling down. It should be down to room temperature now. Let's go and we're gonna take the, the print off the bed. Like I said, hopefully it came out okay. Okay, so the easiest way to take this, so I actually have to confirm, forgot to put on there. Easiest way to take this off is with the putty knife. Get under the edge here. Let's take the skirt off. That came off nice. So let's see how this comes off. Oh, nice and sweet. Okay, this edge piece is what I'm worried about. That came out night came off nice and easy. A little bit of stringing here. And let's see how it came out. Not good. Actually, I think I need to clear all that out. Shoot, not happy. I know this is support. So all of that comes off. I'll need to sand that down. That's not good. Shoot. That is not good. Wall plate's fine. The stitch isn't. Alright everyone, well, that was a disappointing major fail. Uh, like I said, the wall plate came up perfect. The stitch, eh, that did not come out the way that I wanted it to. So, I'll have to try it again. Uh, the only problem is it took six hours to do this. So I need to figure out a way to print faster. Uh, I think I made the, the stitch too thick. I made it the same thickness as the wall plate. I probably should have made it thinner. Darn it. So, back to the drawing board. Uh, what I may do is just cut off the stitch and I have a wall plate if I ever need to replace one. So... It's not really a loss, but not really a win either. It's a, it's a loss. It's a loss. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, that's what the channel's going to be. It's going to be trial and error. I'm going to be trying different things. And some work, some didn't. Uh, the print I did last night of the masks, the air savers for the masks, that was a win. Those work very well. Uh, matter of fact, they're being used right now. That's why I don't have one with me. Uh... So, like I said, just thought, uh, um, I'm dejected right now because I wanted this to come out because it looked, it looked like it was going to be good. But, we'll have to do that the next time. I did order a full roll of the white PLA. Uh, so, I'll try this again when that comes in. And, just have to change my design a little bit. But, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down on the bottom. Uh, if you've ar you're already a subscriber, thank you. I appreciate it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me the thumbs down. Leave me a comment. Anyone out there that knows 3D printing that's watching this, let me know what I did wrong. Because <laughs> i got to figure that out. To waste six hours, it, no. So i gotta I got to do better at this. 
Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys again real soon.